now we'll go through the different ways you can classify enzymes by the type of reaction that they facilitate. And a lot of these are fairly straightforward. The name tells you a lot about what type of reaction is being catalyzed by those enzymes. These are the major classifications that you might be in charge of recognizing. And we'll just go through them one by one to talk about how you can know that you're working with one type of enzyme over another. So first we'll go through oxidoreductases. And those, as the name implies, oxidize or reduce species. And that usually means that they involve proton exchange or perhaps oxygen exchange. Sometimes it involves transferring electrons from one place to another. Remember, there are several different definitions of oxidation and reduction. And a lot of these enzymes can use that in different ways. So they might donate or accept a proton. They might allow an oxygen to bond something, or they might just participate in the gain or loss of electrons by a species. These you might recognize with names such as an oxidase or a dehydrogenase. Those are two types of oxidoreductases. But essentially when you're looking at something where the products are either more or less reduced, or you could say less or more oxidized than the reactants were, that's when you've been working with an oxidoreductase. Maybe oxidase or dehydrogenase will be the name that they use to describe that. Then we get into hydrolases. And a hydrolase is an enzyme that hydrolyzes. It hydrolytically cleaves a substrate. And hydrolysis, remember, is when you use water in order to break a bond. And the interesting thing is that a lot of when you're processing biomolecules, for example, when you turn a triglyceride into multiple fatty acids and a glycerol group, perhaps when you break a large sugar or starch into a monosaccharide or a disaccharide or break a protein down into its constituent amino acids, you're using hydrolysis in order to do that. So a lot of times when you break apart biomolecules, hydrolysis will be the major motif that you're using. And so a lot of the digestive enzymes that we deal with, lipases, amylases, pepsin, a lot of those are hydrolases and essentially they use a water in order to break a biomolecule apart. Then we move on to transferases, and as the name implies, these transfer some group from one compound to another. They might move a methyl group or a phosphate group uh, onto your substrate, or they might remove it from your substrate. But a lot of times when you're processing methyl groups or phosphates, and sometimes these things are also useful to help regulate functions. For example, sometimes some proteins, when you phosphorylate them, become active or inactive. You'll be using a transferase to do that. So when you're moving a methyl group onto or off of a substrate, when you're moving a phosphate group onto or off, or perhaps an acyl group, any of those are going to be transferases where you take some group, often a functional group or something like that, or some compound like a methyl or phosphate, those are transferases, and you might encounter these as kinases, which add phosphate groups onto something, and phosphatases, which remove phosphate groups from some compound. Isomerases create isomers, and remember an isomer is something that has the same chemical formula as something else, but it's somehow structurally different. It may just be a spatial difference, the bond angles or something like that, the chirality, or it could be something that's a more constitutional or structural isomer where the bonds are very different and it looks very different, but it still has the same formula. And so an isomerase is something that takes a compound and changes it into one of its isomers. Ones that you'll encounter uh, in physiology are fumarase, F-U-M-A-R-A-S-E, or a phosphohexose isomerase, which is something that's very important in glycolysis and helps you turn sugars from one form 
into another. And so isomerases, you'll know you're working with them when you see a compound that ends up being a compound with the same chemical formula, but somehow is structurally different, and it is an isomer. Lyases and ligases are two that it's uh, important to be able to distinguish and know the difference between them. A lyase is something that breaks apart a bond. So a lyase breaks apart a compound. It, does, it cleaves or removes certain groups, but notice that it is not hydrolytic. It's not a hydrolase that uses water to do that, but instead it's some non-hydrolytic form of cleaving, breaking, or removing compounds from your substrate. And a ligase is the opposite. Whereas a lyase breaks things apart, a ligase joins them together. It ligates those things. And so it will join those substrates, and it often, but not always, will do that using condensation. Remember, condensation is when you join two things, and in the process of that, you release a water molecule. So a ligase is something that joins substrates and does what they call an addition reaction, whereas a lyase breaks them apart. There are two names that they use for these classes fairly often, but they're kind of confusing. Lyases can be called synthases, and ligases are often called synthetases. And those names are very misleading, but I think the best way to keep them clear is to realize that lyase is a shorter word than ligase. And synthase is a shorter word than synthetase. And so lyase, short word, synthase, short word, whereas ligases are, it's a longer word and those are often called a synthetase. And remember the difference between a lyase and a ligase is that a lyase breaks things apart. It non-hydrolytically removes groups or cleaves bonds, whereas ligases form bonds or do an addition reaction that essentially takes two substrates and puts them together. And so these are your major classifications and a lot of different sources will have other sub-classifications and things like that. But if you're asked to recognize an enzyme type, these are the ones you'll most likely be dealing with. And they're all fairly straightforward because other than lyase and ligase, these are all clearly described by their name. And if you know the, the Latin roots, uh, remember lyase sounds a lot like lice, and to lice is to break. A lyase breaks things, whereas ligase is ligature. It's something like a string that connects things together. A ligase joins things. So if you can just look at the names of these different classes, then you'll be able to easily recognize them by looking at what products you started with, what, rea or sorry, what reactants you started with, what products you end up with, and what needed to happen to get you from point A to point B.